Hallo. Here I want to address the question where can we find a research problem? Right. If you are a researcher or a someone who wants to study for a doctoral degree by research or even a, normally there are two degrees by research there is an MPhil masters in philosophy or there is a PhD or the the DPhil degree by research the question is where do can one find a research problem to work on for purposes of that right of course these are not the only purposes for doing research sometimes if you are just a researcher suppose you have you have your phd already and um you want to to do research if you hold a phd degree it is important that you continue doing research and you publish uh, that is important uh, otherwise uh, your phd is probably not that useful so the question is if you are a researcher either a student or just a researcher where do you find problems that you need to research on this is the question that is very important uh, many of you might be wondering okay i need to do my phd or i'm a researcher maybe you already have a phd or you are just someone who wants to do research where where do you get a research problem how do you because a research problem then is the basis of creating a research project a research project ideally addresses a research problem and uh, then produces contributions those contributions could potentially lead to some form of uh, technology that you can then disseminate around the world or in your country the question is how how do you come where do you find it where do you find a research problem hmm? how do you go about looking for it right there are quite a number of sources for a phd project the easiest by far the easiest source is to link up with a senior researcher who already has a problem right normally senior researchers have got these challenges on the shelf and they have a lot of research ideas research project ideas and sometimes they do have actual projects that are not being undertaken by anybody right i am one of them i i do have uh, over the years i have a lot of problems that are on the shelf right uh, some of them have been investigated by some of our students and they have not exhausted them or they have not really addressed them and uh, those problems remain or they were problems that we defined some time back and they have never i we never get time to to research on them so uh, if you are lucky a, a senior researcher might just give you a problem but that one is 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 not um, you don't get much training because the senior researcher has got has found the problem has defined it have thought about it and probably will then sit down with you to explain to you what the problem is and then your task is the next task on how to state it right normally when i have a, an idea i will not just dish you out a written statement i will tell you and then it's up to you as it's, it's part of training i won't tell you what how to say it i will say i, I will generally describe it and then you go and try to formulate it uh, even though i may have a, a more detailed formulation of it in my mind or even written sometimes we don't give you those documents there is a very good reason for that we 
by giving you a problem i am already skipping you are already skipping a certain stage if you are a phd student you are skipping a stage where you need to identify a problem to go through the process of training to identify a problem right so if you join an existing senior research and find that you and join a, a, a problem that has already been defined a project that already has a problem then that's the easiest way to do it right the next the second probably also easy, easiest way to get a, a PhD project is to to look at literature reviews that have been done by others and published in, in journals but if you follow this route make sure that you take the most recent uh, literature reviews possibly in the same year when, when you are actually looking for that research problem so <clears throat> Normally, there, there is um, a series of a, a journal publication by the ACM. It's called ACM Computing Surveys. Right. This is where people do comprehensive surveys. You find papers that are up to from 30 to 50 pages. They are surveying an entire area or investigating an entire problem and see how far, what is the current state of the art. And then at the end, they list to you the gaps in that area and you can then pick on that but when you pick it you need again to to focus on that problem and do an a comprehensive literature review on exactly to nail it down to go uh, usually if it's published this year then it's likely that not many people have picked up that problem and they have not really investigated that problem especially if it's freshly published uh, the reason why you may also need to do a literature review is that by the time a, a, a journal paper is published, the paper could have been written last year, which basically means uh, it may have already been overtaken by some of the events. So you, you do another literature review to really confirm that it's a, it's a, it's a research problem. Even if it's not, uh, between now and last year, you know, if they wrote the paper last year and it's published this year, Usually, there is not many people who have actually investigated that problem. There are not many advanced, you know, works associated with that challenge. So, surveys, literature surveys or literature reviews are one of the easiest ways to find a research problem. Right. Uh, in the absence of literature reviews, uh, we now have a scenario that gives us the third way on where you can find a research problem this is where you clearly do your own survey the survey yourself right instead of picking a survey done already by other people you do the survey yourself this way you you, you look at a lot of published journal papers that address a particular domain and then you survey that and come up with research gaps yourself. Yeah, that's that's not that it's not exactly that easy. Right. Now let's go on to the fourth one. Mm. The fourth one is where you uh, in your country you can discover that we have you have challenges in your country or in your environment. You have, we have challenges all around the world. We have you have a particular problem. Uh, that problem may not be a research problem, but you might want to find out, okay, why are we having this problem? Could it be, have people already solutions so that that can be applied to this particular problem? And you, you might, for some problems, you might discover that actually there is no solution to the problem you are facing. And then in your case, you have to find the research problem in your area that when you solve it, can then address that particular problem. Uh, in my last recording on, on, on how to state a research problem, I indicated that um, uh, when you, you, sometimes you have three components to a state problem, the X, Y, and the Z, right? 
in other words you try to find the z which is a problem in the application domain and then you check back to try to identify a problem in your area that can be used to contribute not necessarily to solve all the z problem but to contribute towards the solution for the z problem right so uh you, you for instance in the context of um of, of our country you could find that we have a number of challenges but in, in unfortunately a lot of the challenges that we face sometimes already have solutions it's a question of administrators or or, or, or the powers that be to be able to make a decision to plan carefully and apply existing solutions so it's not always the case that the problem that we face uh, uh, can lead to a research problem uh, i know some people say oh we we have problems a lot of problems in our country therefore yeah we need researchers but in most cases they don't we don't because the problem exists already it's a question of uh, administrative decisions or political decisions to simply uh, let to to simply apply existing solutions we at doctoral level for instance we are looking for a gap in human knowledge on the planet <clears throat> so in that context you just don't get a problem and then say ah this is a research problem uh, so it's not appropriate but there are some problems where if you try to find a solution you can't find a solution at all on the planet on a planetary scale right but at the same time in that problem space where we we find real problems you must uh, sometimes look for efficient problems efficient solutions you know you could say uh, an efficient solution doesn't exist but i want to, uh, to 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 try to find an efficient solution it could be a contribution or or where you say oh, the, the only way to do this has been this but there are probably other approaches and you start bringing in new approaches that can do better or that can be cheaper reduce costs and increase efficiency and, and, and all that stuff so yes problems around you could be the source of a research problem but once you find that problem you need to do a lot of work you need also to do a literature review you need to also first of all you need to recognize that the problem you are getting you are seeing could be just a motivating problem not the actual research problem and behind it there could be some a problem that and so you need a very a, you need to be a skilled researcher to be able to to move from the motivating problem to the research problem right many of you make the mistake some of the submissions you make uh, are that you say oh there is this problem in healthcare and you start talking about healthcare 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 and yet that's not in your area you are not a, you are not a, 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 a healthcare you know trained person expert so you, you have no right to basically claim that you are you are trying to solve a healthcare problem uh, so it could be a motivating problem you should recognize that it's not in your area and it's not uh, it's not your research problem you need to be inspired or to be motivated by that particular problem in healthcare and then you must come up with your correctly identify uh, the research problem in your domain so that is very important to know uh, some people uh, so so uh, I, you, you, we need to start seeing that recognition that maturity in as a research as someone who thinks like a researcher to see that all these other problems in other domains in agriculture in all these other areas are not this is not your area so but you can be inspired by problems in that and then you discover your 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 real research problem such that if you solve it you can then come back to this domain to the application domain and show that you you have solved the problem and therefore it works in by addressing a portion not necessarily all of the motivating problem but a portion of that problem 
So this is the fourth source of. Uh, so you, you do need to do a little review, read widely, and be able to correctly identify the problem, and then make sure you have your three components X, Y, and Z, as I have uh, indicated in the previous problem. Right. So these are the four sources of uh, research uh, problems, and. Um, uh, the ability to, to, to use any of these is, is very important for a researcher because even if you, after finishing your, after you having been fully trained as a researcher and acquired your, your, your attained your PhD or your MPhil and you are now a researcher in the field, you will obviously use a combination of these methods of finding a research problem as you do your own research right so that is very important uh, the one thing that you need to know also is that not many people who have got phds are also aware of this some people completely graduate with their phds without knowing how the difference between a motivating problem and your actual research problem sometimes uh, of course, sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes funders may want you to state a problem in a certain way. So you might actually put in, in front the motivation problem for purposes of competing for funding. So there are times when you see that we write papers that sounds as if we state a problem that is in the application domain, not necessarily in our, our, our domain, which, may, which is one of the fields of computing. Uh, the reason why we may do that is because we want, there is a funder who is specifically focused on agriculture or in healthcare or, and so on and so on. And so when we try to address that problem, underlying, uh, underneath that, we may be applying a particular research in our area. But when we write a research paper, we put in the forefront the domain problem. Right, but you need you you need to learn to know, be have the awareness when we tra when you are a first time researcher, you need to learn the difference between a motivating problem and a research problem. This allows you to know exactly which area you want to contribute because a, a correct identification of your research problem will direct will guide you on which. Uh, what sort of contribution you need to make and which area is your contribution. So <clears throat> for those who are doing PhD and, 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 and you are being supervised by a senior researcher, they want to, we would be emphasizing, of course, on, on your contribution in your area rather than a, 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 in the application domain. For instance, there's no way we can supervise research in agriculture because we haven't been trained in agriculture even your supervisors the same with healthcare the same with all the education we are not educationists we haven't been trained in education we are in computing so there is no way we can understand the principles and concepts in accurately without uh, consulting an, an, an educationist so don't try to solve problems in education problems in healthcare problem what you need to do is you while you can be motivated by those problems you should clearly distinguish between uh, the application domain of your of your research problem and uh, the actual domain of your of your research problem it should be clear even when you talk about your research one should be very clear that uh, this is a computing research problem Ah, this is a, 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 an information system, this is a computer science, this is a software engineering problem, and so on, so on. So that is very important. With that, I end this recording, and good luck doing research or undertaking the craft of research. <laughs>